Okay guys and welcome back for a new review. Today we're going to take a look at the 1998 G.I. Joe Mobat. The Mobat is a classic G.I. Joe vehicle. One of the first vehicles out in the line back in 1982. This is a reissue that they did in 1998 like I stated uh, of the Mobat. And they have changed uh, pretty much some of the aesthetic and the... Uh, this particular one comes with two action figures, so we get Heavy Duty and Thunderwing. It's really cool uh, looking at the uh, box art for these G.I. Joe vehicles. I'll spin this around to the back, and here you can see uh, some of the... Uh, features of it, the uh, main turret that rotates, uh, the battle cannon extends and elevates, it's got the infrared night scope, really cool, definitely digging that. So I'm going to crack this thing open and give you guys a better look at the G.I. Joe Mobat, stay tuned. Okay, and we have the Mobat out of package. Just gonna go ahead and give you an overall look at the vehicle. It's a really awesome looking tank, and I like the updated camouflage that they've done on this. Uh, I do prefer the original standard green to this camo, but I can't deny that this doesn't look good. Cause it really does it's it's a really sharp real world look and it still has that really nice high gloss plastic and paints that they used to achieve this camouflage so i really like it i'm very happy so far with my choice to go with the 1998 mobat so when you get it out of the package uh first thing you'll note this is a motorized battle tank and here's a look at the underneath of the tank and you'll notice it takes two d size batteries and i believe for the uh, battery port it's slightly different than the originals uh this one has a screw whereas the other one i believe just clipped in this one takes a screw so i'm going to go ahead and put some D batteries in there and then we'll continue on alright guys stay tuned okay so I've got the batteries installed now so we'll get to the action feature a little later on in the review but for now I just wanted to go ahead and take a look at some of the details on the actual tank so taking a look at the actual uh, spec sheet for the unit uh, this cannon is called the Z68A thin wall 55 round 140 millimeter cannon which I think might be a different description than the original Mobat but not having that I'm not 100% sure um, and then up top here this is called a 50 caliber rapid fire machine gun and the, uh, let's see, we have the infrared targeting system. That's pretty cool. And looking into some of the details, you'll notice you got some extra links for the treads uh, sculpted up on top in the front here, which is really nice detail. Uh, they state that the armor for this particular tank is bonded nylon titanium alloy hull armor. Again, that may be a different description from the original, but I am not sure on that. Uh, but there's a lot of really nice sculpted detail on here. You see you got some tools sculpted in on there um, got some nice engine vent covers here looking at it from behind 
You got the big vents there. And the engine uh, stated for the unit uh, on the sticker is a V12 turbo, uh, 1200 horsepower. Um, and let's see, according to the specs, uh, that's a slight difference. They call it an SDE2 1800 horsepower turbine engine. So there's a little difference there. But not uncommon to have inconsistencies with plans and actual vehicles in the GI Joe line. That's something that did happen fairly often. But just a wonderful amount of detail. And then the treads on here. Uh, this version of the treads started in 1983 because I believe the 1982 version didn't have the slotted pegs to allow the tank to grip better and the original rubber uh, treads would slide off the bogies. Uh, so there was some difficulty with that. So they changed the design and this obviously being a 2008 version uh, has the newer slotted design, which is nice. Okay, so continuing on with the features, the turret could rotate 360 degrees. So it could traverse all the way around, which is a really nice feature. And then also the actual cannon itself could retract. So you could simulate a firing action. It also could elevate a little bit. So you got some average uh, elevation on there could go more but I'm not really complaining on that uh, and you'll notice as this rotates the main uh, housing area for the action figure and the 50 caliber machine gun does not and that's because this activates the actual motorized function of the unit so we'll just go ahead and take a brief look okay, at so that. Let's take a quick look at the actual action feature. This is a motorized battle tank and the way it would work is this was your control panel. It was this top uh, seating area for the actual action figure and by pushing it forward, backwards or left and right you could get the tank to do uh, any of those functions. So moving it forward And moving it back. So it's as simple as that. Now it also had left and right uh, ability too. So I'll show you that. So as the tank is moving forward, you could turn it. By turning this. and also in the opposite direction. Pretty neat. Okay, now taking a look at the tank commander himself. Uh, this one, his code name is Thunderwing. So here's a look at his file card. You can feel free to pause and read that. It's really kind of floppy. Let's see if I can hold it a little better for you. Moving that aside, uh, give you a 360 view of the action figure. Comes in this uh, pretty nice green jumpsuit. Uh, he has some nice detail on him as well. Let's zoom in on that. Taking a closer look at the head sculpts, pretty decent. 
black hair, clean shaven. Uh, it's got an interesting uh, eyebrow expression there. And you notice he's got some rank on his collar. That uh, should match up with his uh, grade as 01. I believe his uh, lieutenant. Uh, beyond that, going down, he's got a sculpted on pistol. And he's got this device on there. I'm not 100% sure what that is. But it's got some nice painted detail, the red button on there. And he's also wearing what looks to be a bulletproof vest. On his left leg, he's got just a uh, pouch, gray pouch painted on. And it's interesting that they got these pants like stitched together at the side, which is a little, a little different. But they also did add painted detail. The gray is painted in on each stitch. And then on his right leg, just another pouch. And the, the uh, pattern continues into some standard black combat boots. So Thunderwing only comes with one accessory. Uh, but the accessory is a really nice helmet. So it's a standard... 80 style G.I. Joe helmet, but with the clip on visor and antenna set. So let's put that on him. It kind of wants to sit crooked. Let's try that again. And then the antenna should swivel up. So that's pretty cool. That's a nice look. Next, we'll take a look at Heavy Duty. So here we go. We've got uh, Heavy Duty. He is the uh, the Heavy Ordnance Specialist. Here's a look at his file card. You can feel free to pause and read that. I was actually a pretty big fan of Heavy Duty, uh, mostly due to the Hall of Fame line, which is where I had first received my Heavy Duty from the 12-inch G.I. Joe uh, action figure line, and I really liked that figure quite a bit. But let's go ahead and give you a 360 of Heavy Duty. Comes in a pretty cool outfit. Now, this is a repaint of the version one heavy duty notice it's got joe written on the back of his hat it's a really nice detail and he's got this dark brown matching shirt that matches his hat he's got some nice painted detail here as well I'll zoom in on his face sculpt And you notice he has a goatee. The Hall of Fame figure was clean shaven. And version one of the three and three quarter version of Heavy Duty only had a mustache. Uh, compare him to this figure shortly. But very nice detail. The grenades painted silver. He's also got Joe written on his belt. His shirt is a ripped up sleeve look. But, you notice the detail isn't really painted in for the flesh tone on the rips. Going down from there, he's got a very odd camouflage pattern going on here. It's gray pants, red, green, and black camo. It's a little strange. I've never seen anything quite like that. It looks almost like a corpse style camouflage. I don't really care for that too much, but it still works. And then into some black combat boots, and he does have a knife sculpted on his left boot, which is nice. And he comes with a couple of accessories. He comes with this assault rifle with a sling.
really nicely sculpted and he comes with a black backpack may very well be a reuse from an earlier G.I. Joe figure but I cannot identify it offhand it's got the canteen looks like some grenades sculpted on there nice pouches and so that would just peg right onto his back now let's take a look at this version of heavy duty next to his original version one and you notice some differences here obviously the color scheme is different and another interesting point is version one is the one that's actually painted on on the box so that's interesting obviously the shirt being different the pants the camouflage this doritos looking green doritos on version one wasn't great but i do like it a little better than that and then just some color changes and then also the mustache versus the goatee on version two there so let's look at the action figures let's get back to the tank okay and one detail i missed on that comparison uh, as you can see on his left arm, he has two uh, Cobra symbols crossed out, just like the original figure, but I don't think I pointed that out. So here's the full set and what it looks like all together. So basically you got your Mobat with Thunderwing and Heavy Duty to kind of march alongside the tank with very cool set i'm really happy that i picked this up uh never having a mopat this is an excellent way to get one uh it's very reasonably priced compared to original not that the original mopat's all that expensive but like i said trying to get one complete uh and in good shape can be a little difficult but i also really like this camouflage pattern too i think it looks really sharp I really like the way it's got that real world look. This is, you know, no weird take where you get orange and bizarre colors, those neons. So for me, I really like taking a look at, you know, some of the alternate options just due to the, uh, the cost of some of the originals or trying to get them in great shape. But that's it. That's a look. At the 1998 Mobat motorized battle tank with Thunderwing and Heavy Duty. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And if you want a sneak peek at some upcoming reviews, uh, I'll be sure to post a link to my Facebook. That's it, guys. Thanks as always for watching, subscribing, and commenting.